Hello and welcome back to these Cotswold Bees Fireside Chats. Now the subject of our conversation today is, is honey good for you? And it won't surprise you as somebody who makes most of their living by actually selling honey that my answer is yes. But we need to look at things from a little bit more scientific way. You'll remember hopefully that a while ago we made a video after we'd harvested our honey and we had the picture of domestic bliss of me eating honey in the kitchen. So let's just roll back time a little bit and remind ourselves of that situation. There we go. Now what better is that than that? There we have honey straight from the hive. That honey was taken off less than 10 minutes ago and now I'm gonna have my breakfast. And this is the result of a year's work. This is that hive you saw us putting in earlier in the year as a nucleus and now we've actually got our honey to eat. So I hope you enjoyed your beekeeping as much as we've enjoyed ours and now we're really gonna enjoy our breakfast. So the question I need to ask there and that many people ask us is, well, was that a good breakfast to have? Was that doing me any good? Or was because it's sugar, it actually doing me harm? Well, let's have a look at the evidence. Before we do that, however, I've got to do a bit of a disclaimer. I'm a bee farmer, not a doctor or a scientist. So what I'm gonna tell you is what I've read and what I've looked up over the years. And so if you are thinking of using honey to treat a disease or maybe even cure an illness, then make sure you consult them or medical professionals first. I'm a bee farmer, I'm not a medical professional. So make sure you check with them before you actually start using honey for medicinal purposes. As you know, there's an awful lot in the press at the moment about us all eating too much sugar and it's bad for us, the rise of diabetes. So how can honey possibly be good for you? Well, first of all, yes, it is a sugar and we can't get away from that, but it's very different to processed sugar. So if you take, for example, your standard processed sugar, be it white or brown, doesn't matter, this will be principally sucrose. With honey, it's about 40% fructose and about 30% glucose, and then the rest of it is consisted of other things. We've got vitamins in there, antioxidants, enzymes, things that are good for the human body. So we start off from a better point. The other thing is, honey's much sweeter than standard sugar, and so you'll tend to use less of it especially if you're using it for sweetening drinks or in adding to cakes, for example. So from that point of view, it helps you cut down on the amount of sugar you're actually consuming. But is it actually good for you? Can it be used in a medicinal way? Well, for years, honey has been used as a medicine. And the first thing that we're often asked is, will it deal with allergies, especially hay fever? Well, there's some very good research that it does. And so long as you buy unfiltered honey, and that's really the important thing, it must be unfiltered honey so it's still got some pollen in it, then actually the science says it builds up your immunity. And certainly Carol, Kate Baker extraordinaire, used to suffer terribly with hay fever before we started keeping bees. And now she eats our honey unfiltered and it's made a huge difference to her hay fever. And so we genuinely believe it helps. And so do many of our customers who buy the honey specifically for that. While we're talking about unfiltered honey, we need to discuss that not all honey is the same. Now you'll often see the term raw honey or pure honey, and honey labelling regulations really aren't very good. There's no definition of raw honey. For us here at Cotswold Bees, we say it's only raw honey if it's been untouched at all. So it's in the comb, just taken off the hive, put in a box, and then you consume it. For us, that's raw honey. It's not been heated, it's not been touched, it's not been spun out, it really is raw as it came off the hive. The next stage up is spun honey, and if you are gonna eat spun honey, then you want to make sure it's been unfiltered, so it's still got the goodies in there. The more you do to honey, the more you take away, and that's really important to remember. Really heavily processed honey will have a lot less of the goodies in it, and will be a lot less good for you than standard honey that's just been taken off the hive and spun out of the comb. So talk to your local beekeeper or talk to whoever's selling the honey and find out what the situation is, how much processing has gone on with that honey. We've discussed allergies but what about colds and flu? Well for years if you've got a sore throat you'll remember your mum will have given you a bit of honey and lemon in some water to actually drink and there is good evidence that the honey is helpful there. If you are going to use honey as a drink, make sure that you use warm water and not hot water. 
If you use boiling water, it starts to take away from the honey. So nice warm water is the temperature to use. And there is evidence that the honey actually will help you there. It's certainly been shown to have an immune boosting effect. And so hopefully your cold or flu will last rather less time than it otherwise would have done. Honey is never going to cure a cold or flu, but it might make the symptoms a little more bearable and also might make the time scale that it lasts a bit less. Now, <clears throat> treatment of wounds. This is something for which honey is really famous, going right back to the ancient Egyptians and now still being used in hospital. And honey works well here for three reasons. First of all, honey is what we call hygroscopic. In other words, it sucks in moisture from around it. So the only way honey is ever going to go off is if you take a jar of honey and leave the lid off in the kitchen. It will suck in the water and start to ferment. Now we really don't want to do that if we're actually going to eat the honey. But if we spread it on a wound, this is great because it draws the wound. And then it draws the wound into a sterile atmosphere. There's so much sugar content in honey that it actually isn't going to allow any bacteria to live in there. And that's why honey lasts basically forever and honey has been taken out of the tombs of the pharaohs and still edible. And finally, honey contains hydrogen peroxide. And this sounds awful, why would we want to eat that? But it's a natural antifungal and antibacterial substance, and so really helps us with the wounds. And it's probably the hydrogen peroxide as well, the antibacterial side of it, that helps with your sore throat. So great for the sore throat, colds and flu, and certainly really good as a wound dressing. I've taken my notes up now at this point because I need to read from it because this really is where I'm not a scientist. But there's been an awful lot of talk recently about the human microbiome. And is honey good for that? Well, honey's been shown to be a natural prebiotic for many of our good bacteria within the gut. But it's also shown to be very effective against, I've got to read this bit now, helibo... Ugh, can't pronounce it even. Helicobacter pylori. Now, Helicobacter pylori, got it right the second time, is known to be a cause of stomach ulcers. And it's shown that honey can be very helpful with the digestive problems associated with that. So another good reason for eating honey. So I can put my notes down now because I don't need to read any more from those. Finally, I want to talk about honey and turmeric. Turmeric is known as a natural anti-inflammatory and we've already talked about the health giving effects of honey. And if you actually mix honey and turmeric together, it is shown that it's a really good anti-inflammatory and antibacterial uh, substance to use in a drink. If you actually mix them together, you multiply the effect of both of them. But even better, if you put a twist of black pepper in, you can multiply it again. If you are going to use turmeric with your honey, then use what we use in our preparation, which is ground turmeric, because the effect lasts a lot longer. If you use the fresh, it can actually go off much quicker. So a mixture of honey, turmeric and a little bit of black pepper and it's absolutely really good for you. Personally, I like it just before bedtime in a little bit of milk as a nice warm drink. And it's known in many areas of the world as a golden milk and shown to be really good for you. So there you have it. Is honey good for you? Well, yes it is. Again, don't have too much of a good thing. The other thing is quality is really important. Not all honeys are the same. And also, different honeys will have different properties. Some of the darker honeys will have different properties to some of the lighter honeys. So all honey is different. But whatever honey you're going to eat, and I keep saying this over and over again, I'm not really sorry for saying it over and over again, make sure quality is the thing you go for. If you do like your honey in the comb, that is the most natural way of eating it, and that will have some propolis in there as well. And propolis is bee glue, which is full of flavonoids, which again have been shown to be good for the human body in terms of antibacterial and maybe even anti-cancer. So think very much when you're next eating your honey, yes it is doing you good. Not too much, but it definitely is better for you than processed sugar. If you want to know a little bit more, there is a blog on our website talking about is honey good for you. So I hope you found that interesting and if you do and you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do so. A thumbs up is always welcome as well and until the next time enjoy your honey and enjoy your beekeeping and I'm going to finish off my cup of tea and we'll speak soon.